Hello, and welcome to my review of all 20 figures from the Lego Ninjago movie minifigure series. So the first figure we're looking at right now is just Kendo Kai. And unfortunately, the staff he's holding is not completely in focus when I hold it like this. But uh, you can see a little bit better when I rotate the figure just like that. Now, what I am going to do in this case is remove his headgear. Uh, it's just a simple kendo uh, uniform, and I'm just going to remove that so you guys can take a better look at the face underneath. Now, he does actually come with an alternate headpiece, but I'm not going to put that on just yet. Instead, I'm going to actually remove this. So now you can hopefully see his torso just a little bit better. Around the back, there is some very nice gold detailing. And the main torso is just red. There is actually a little bit of printing on his legs in the dark red color. It is a little bit tough to see on the camera, but they pretty much are just some diamonds in a red color. Although I didn't mention this in the previous figure, I will mention now that the majority of hair pieces used in the series are new, especially the ones on the ninjas. So Kai's hair piece, Nia, Jay, Cole... Uh, Lloyd, all of them have uh, new hair pieces. So that being said, in this case, we have Nia in a white uniform. Um, her accessory in this case is these wooden katanas. On the back, you can see the Wu Crew logo. And this is uh, a very cool all-white uniform. Now, I did forget to show you this on Kai's face, but I will just show you the back. It does not have an alternate face in this case, and uh, there's some very, very nice gold detailing on this figure. Next up, we have one of the two Lloyd Garmadons included in this series. He is in his full ninja attire with a sword with a little tassel on the back. Again, he has that very nice crisp printing on the back with that uh, very cool d uh, pattern. And his accessory on the right hand actually is a printed 2 by 3 tile, which is exclusive to this set it is the blueprint for his dragon and it's uh, extremely detailed so that's the hair that comes with this minifigure he does not have an alternate face unfortunately in this case Next up, we have Sensei Wu, one of my favorite minifigures in this series. He actually comes with a 1x2x2 brick over here that is in the just normal yellow color, and it's actually completely printed on this side. Unfortunately, there is no printing around the back. The minifigure obviously does have printing, and that's very nice. You might notice that there is also a little bit of printing right here on the arms, and on this cool skirt piece that comes. Now I should mention that this is a uh, older style of paper, so it is a little bit finicky, and it can get bent or damaged, I guess, a little bit easily. Um, the hat, in this case, is the older style, the thinner style. It comes in tan. He does have a beard in this case, and uh, there's just a little bit of printing right there on those toes. Now, here we have one of three iterations of Lord Garmadon. You can tell that I have adjusted the camera because this minifigure is just so large. Um, he does actually come with two sets of arms, like he has often been portrayed in the series. So that's an additional piece with the torso. So very, very cool there. Um, the torso isn't anything crazy, actually. Underneath over here, what we have, if I just quickly remove that, is a piece we've seen with Garmadon quite a few times as well as a purple belt. I do understand that this is really not lit very well, and I do, I, I certainly apologize for that. Around the back, there is very, very slight printing down there, but I, it's almost impossible to see it as the camera is right now. So that accessory he has here is completely new, as well as the hat he's using in this case, which is different from Wu's, and that's in a black color. His face is also quite angry in this case. Next minifigure is J. Now, he does come in a casual attire with really no ninja garb or weapon or anything like that. The scarf piece here in orange was actually new for this time, and it was the first time it was ever used. 
Uh, again, his hairpiece is new, and the selfie stick is just such a cool inclusion. Unfortunately, since it is showing his face, it's not super usable, but it is a very clever build with a small amount of parts and nothing too complicated, actually. I will actually quickly take off his headgear and his scarf, just so you can see the torso and legs just by themselves. And um, that's it for this minifigure. So here we have Lloyd again. Now this time he is in a little bit of a casual outfit. And this is actually a dark green color. I do hope that it's not too challenging for you guys to uh, see that. His legs are actually in the black color. And there's just a little bit of printing suggesting a belt. And on top he has a sweat shirt with a hood coming over and just a little bit of hair at the top there. I thought that was an amazing detail. Now, his two accessories are both new pieces for the series. And that on the left hand over there, you can see the spoon. And in the right hand, a very, very beautifully detailed bowl. Um, both these pieces have since then been released in a couple of sets. The bowl actually has never been re-released in that specific print, but the piece has been released again. So uh, a very, very well done figure. Following the trend of some of the other uh, ninjas in the series, this one is Cole, and he comes in a bit of a casual outfit. You can see he has a shirt which looks like from a concert, and it actually says 1985, which really makes me wonder how old some of these ninjas really are. Um, it says World Tour, and on top of that, it actually says Sold Out. He is what looks like a tank top because you can see the entire part of his arms. And the logo on his shirt here just makes me think of the band ACDC. I'm guessing that's probably what they were going to. Uh, they were going for. Um, and then his accessory is a boombox in black with some gold printing, which is a new color for that. His hip actually has just a little bit of printing as well. The next minifigure is Coco, and she comes with some very, very nicely detailed printing and a little bit of what is actually gold that goes from the top and down to the bottom. And I really like this color scheme, actually, the sand green with the reddish brown. I feel like that goes well together. The hairpiece in this case is also new, and uh, it's an interesting smile. You can probably see that there's just a tiny bit of black in the teeth there, and that's actually supposed to be completely intentional. She also comes with this purse in the dark red color, which I think I might have seen in some Friends sets in the past. So, for the final ninja, the one I haven't covered yet, we have Zane. And he comes in this very, very neat and pretty usable vest. And, well, sorry, it's a sweater and a vest. So, it's a very cool combination. And this is another one of the, I guess, pieces from this entire line that can be used in many other figures outside of Ninjago. I always appreciate these kinds of figures, especially in... Um, I know Ninjago isn't exactly a licensed theme, it's it's a little bit different. Anyways, um, it's it's a cool figure in general. He has this very useful backpack, one I think I have seen before. I should mention that there is printing on Zane's head around the side, which gives sort of a snowy feel. Uh, his face is not the best. I, I wasn't a fan of how they portrayed him in the movie, but in general, this is a nice figure. So here is Shark Army, General Number One. Yes, that is the official name for this minifigure. And those pieces around the side are actually just plastic. When you buy the minifigure brand new, they come in a like a, a rectangular sheet and you kind of just pull them out. And I think that's a perfect piece for this because it just, I guess it really gives the whole water feeling. Um, her accessory on the left hand here is actually a slushy, And I think that's just such a cool... Such a cool usable piece. I think that almost goes for like a dollar anywhere else. And there is a ton of printing on this minifigure. Very, very crisp. Around the back, there's really not too much. You can see the Lego logo. And that hairpiece, since this, has been used quite a few times. Next up is the Shark Army Octopus. This is a definitely, I guess, a cool figure. And a part of the whole theme of uh, animal, sea, sea animal shaped uh, headgear and I think this is actually kind of usable like you could put a dark orange minifigure head under this and maybe add some more detailing and actually uh, call this an octopus put it in like a zoo or something I understand that it might not really have the right number of arms 
Uh, I see five on the front and then two on the back. I'm not completely sure. Maybe I'm miscounting them. Uh, it just seems like an interesting choice. The eyes are very well done. And in general, I just like the whole shaping of it. So the minifigure definitely looks different with all his gear removed. The piece that was used for his head is completely flexible plastic. And he actually has what looks like some sort of breathing tank as well. Now you can tell he looks, yeah, he does look different. He actually has a stud shooter on the right side and then a fish over here. Otherwise, it's a uh, fairly simple minifigure. So just like the Shark Army octopus that preceded this, the Shark Army angler has a headpiece that can also double as the actual animal if you just put a, I guess, any sort of, even a clear stud underneath this. Um, sorry, I meant a minifigure head underneath this. So that's uh, really cool. You can see that the weapon actually, I apologize, is going out of frame, but that is a mace, which is connected then to a bar and then connected to a fish. So there are three separate pieces over there. And I will quickly take off this headpiece so you can get a better look at the face. There is a scar actually there, which makes this a pretty usable face. And around the back, there is very little. Finally, we have the Shark Army Great White. Now, although it's named the Great White, it looks very little like a Great White. The shark is completely differently colored, but I guess that's not too relevant. There is some incredible printing going here on the arms. It appears like some sort of lava, and it just looks so, so good. You can see it's on the legs as well, and it's really just quite incredible how they did some of that. Um, yeah, it's it's really amazing. The, the printing actually goes around the sides so that's something i've really never seen before his uh, his weapon here is actually like a black fish with fire coming out so some sort of fish thrower and i will remove this uh this whole helmet piece just to show you how big comically large his eyebrows are he's very mad as well and he's got a uh, classic space tank back there and an amazingly detailed torso so here is Flashback Garmadon, just like all the other Garmadons that we have in this series especially. This does come with the two layers, with this one having the, I guess, the ridged part on the back. And another really cool thing about this is that all of the arms are dual molded. So I think his actual skin color is black, but the, uh, the sleeves are supposed to be dark orange. And if I remove this camera over here, you can see the, uh, I guess, the visual trickery that they have done here. And uh, there's supposed to be a tie going through both those shirts. I think that's very clever how they did it. And he has a belt, just some normal pants. And uh, his accessory down here is a, I guess, a tourism sort of flyer or photo. He has sunglasses on, his blonde hair, and then finally he just comes with a standard Lego camera. This is another of my favorites in the series just because of how usable some of the parts are. It does the exact same style as the previous minifigure with the ridge section being on the back. It does come with a pretty standard Garmadon face with his actual proper helmet. Um, it actually also comes with a bowl, this time in sand green and a different pattern and another one of the spoons. Now, this has some great printing on the sides of the arms. I know I am getting maybe a little bit greedy here, but I would have loved if they put some printing on the sides of the legs. I think that would have taken it up just another level altogether, but I really think it's a very cool and a very well-designed torso with the volcanoes and the clouds. So this figure is actually called Gong and Guitar Rocker. I'm not completely sure where that name came from, but I will do my best to show you what the figure has. He comes with a brand new guitar here. Um, the piece is, has been used before, but the print in this case is new. There is actually a tattoo here on his left arm, which is pretty cool. He has dual molded legs and a little bit of printing on the front with a cool skull there. Um, you can see in this face, in this case, his face is looking like he's mid-song or something. And if I remove that hair piece, which is actually a semi-soft piece, you can see that he actually comes with an alternate face. Next is a Garmadon Propulsion Laboratory Technician. I know that's a mouthful of a name, but they're usually just called the GPL Techs. Now they do come, well this minifigure especially, comes with some cool accessories. In the right hand we just have a normal Lego mug, no printing in this case, and then a computer. And that's just a standard Lego computer. I will open it up for you guys uh, that maybe haven't seen this before. 
it actually just opens up just like that right down the middle and it's a uh, fairly simple piece but does a very nice job so actually you can see that under the uh, coat in this case maybe a lab coat you can see the name which says uh, git I'm not sure if that's perhaps a <laughs> acronym GIT uh, maybe it's a Garmadon Institute or something and uh, under that there's actually a Batman logo which I thought was a cool detail the legs are dual molded white and uh, medium nougat with some cool printing there and a fairly simple face and hairstyle next is a minifigure with a lot of potential outside of Ninjago specifically and this is the sushi chef now I believe this might have been one of the first uses of that interesting uh, hairpiece now it looks like it is a bald figure but really what it is it's a two-part piece with this part being molded in white and printed on with a little bit of black and then a uh, yellow on the top I think they also might have used it in the pirate which I think might have come before this not completely sure though and um, yeah so the legs are a little bit simple it's just a uh, black and white dual molded which ends up being useful and there's this amazing printing around the sides I think that's supposed to be perhaps a crayfish or shrimp something of that sort and it comes around the front as well and you can see that we actually have a little bit of sushi here and that is put on a one by one round brick so it looks like it's uncut and they actually gave us a spare which is a tile that just comes like that uh, in his right hand he does have what I guess has been used or called a cleaver before I'm guessing he's not gonna be doing any crazy cutting but um, it is a very very nice figure for the final figure, we have the N-Pop Girl. Now, this minifigure has yet another reference to another LEGO theme, with that being Unikitty, right, prominently on the shirt. There is so much going on in this figure with many, many different colors and, I guess, a new print for that bear. I think that's also the first time it's uh, appeared in that color, and it always is nice to get these sorts of little, uh, I guess, toys and LEGO things like that. Around the back, we have some hearts and stars, the hair looks to be dual molded, and that is the print we have, sorry, that is a piece we saw originally in the Harley Quinn figure. Also comes with a dress piece. In this case, there's so many different colors on that. It's really very cool. And um, finally, then we have some striping down here in the middle, which is so, so neat. And a couple more hearts there. Uh, in general, this is a very, very cool minifigure. So if you made it this far into the video, I'd like to thank you for sticking around. I did try to make this video a little bit shorter than the last one. I understood that it was a little bit lengthy. Uh, in general, I did like this series quite a bit. I am not usually the biggest fan of specific movie or show-based series because sometimes the, the use of the figure's parts, the accessories, torsos, all that stuff can be a little bit limited. I think that's not really the case in this situation. There are a lot of pieces and parts that can be used in many different scenarios. That being said, I was a little bit disappointed by the inclusion of so many of the villains. Um, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be villains in the set. I'm just saying that they did feel a little bit repetitive. I'm saying the octopus, the great white, the angler, whatever. The head pieces are definitely cool, but the rest of the torso just seems a little bit uninteresting to me. Again, just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think of the series, what your favorite part is. I think my favorite part is definitely either Lloyd or Garmadon's bowl. They're just very, very nice. Um, thanks again for checking this out, and I hope you have a great day.